Hi, my name is Nora. I'm the director for Amnesty International Malaysia. Um, today, it, I think it's a very special day because it's the first time actually we collaborate with NX uh, to celebrate Human Rights Day together. And what better way to celebrate it with um, the art, art um, communities and also to with the whole Malaysians. Um, and it's very important today because we, one of the things that NX always do uh, is the Freedom of Expression Award. And why do we have this Freedom of Expression Award? Because we felt that, you know, even though there are other awards that have been given so far, we felt that this is uh, one way um, the communities could recognize how um, individuals or group struggle to push the boundary of freedom of expression in Malaysia. We feel that it's very important not only to recognize, but also to, um, to celebrate them and their work. And that's why we're here at uh, Amnesty together with Annex this year, decided to uh, have five people that we need to honor. How do we come up? Where does this, uh, all these nominees come up? Uh, we had about 10 nominees. 10 nominees uh, nominated by Malaysians. Uh, we have uh, open voting awards, uh, over, uh, open, open nominee sessions, where you invite Malaysians to actually come up with the names of individuals or groups who they feel have pushed the boundary of uh, freedom of expression in Malaysia. And then from this, uh, the past winners of freedom of expression actually voted for who they think are the best uh, when it comes to pushing the boundary of freedom of expression. So that, that is the process that we went through. And after that, uh, Pang, together with the best accountant in Malaysia, uh, tally up all the numbers. And uh, these are the winners for the NX Expression uh, Freedom of Expression Award. Um, if, if you can see from the, uh, our, um, um, uh, our website, we didn't actually name them. Why? We give, the, we give you a little bit of um, their, their description because uh, we felt that this year is a bit sensation. So we wanted to share a lot more with you guys and that's why we, the, the name has not been announced until now. So let me first describe uh, the first winner. Uh, she is a woman, is a lady, uh, who has been working with Global Diversity Foundation in, in Sabah. She worked with local partners and communities in Sabah to find ways that enable indigenous and local communities to engage with conservation agencies and government for empowering the indigenous people of Sabah to work with all available tools to fight for their right to their ancestral land, for training community members in research and documentation methods, including resource mapping and monitoring, livelihood assessment, documentation of traditional knowledge, and a range of outreach approaches, including community filmmaking, using mother tongue language, as the key to bridging a common understanding about conservation goals and shared benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a warm up hand applause to the first winner, Madam Miss uh, Agnes Agama. So that they could wear it wherever. taking on the laws of the country that prevent her full expression of her identity, for doing her best in living a true life to herself, and going against the odds in demanding to be legally recognized by her name and gender in her document. I think you really know her. Though she died, she's not here with us any longer. She had galvanized the transgender community, she had galvanized Malaysians, she had galvanized the NGOs, and the public outrage at the injustice that she had suffered and provided Malaysia's LGBTIQ is a symbol of courage. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand of applause to Alicia Fahana. She's no longer with us, but can represent the team. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the academic is Nisha. Ms. Nisha. Ms. Nisha is the program manager for the translator program in Kinshasa. Can I give it to you? Yeah. <laughs> That's it, lady. We have a lot more ladies this year. Yeah. This lady, she has shown beauty, she has shown grace and sheer awesomeness while demonstrating on the street with the people. Woo! For standing against tear gas, ladies and gentlemen, imagine, remember the tear gas and water cannons with nothing more than a flower. For providing the right to free and fair election in an elegant and inspiring symbol and embracing her role in inspiring many others to do the same. Let's give a warm hand of applause to Auntie Mercy! Here. The fourth gentleman, we are giving him this award for, for capturing the follies and ironies of Malaysian politics through cartoon and reminding us the power of art in the critique of power. For creatively finding platforms for his bold cartoons in various publications, even when the spaces for him to express such themes are being limited, and even when his books are banned and illegal in Malaysia. We gave him this award for showing that all Malaysians must take a stand in this political climate. Ladies and gentlemen, Zuna. <laughs> She's not here, but we have many ladies here inside. Zuna. This is for Bazwin. Last but not least, certainly not least. This is a group. And we're giving them this award because for championing how the two important forms of expression, the right to determine the ruling government and the right to voice dissatisfaction with the state government, are intricately related. We're giving them this award for showing that when legitimate concerns of citizens to be heard are compromised, the same citizens can exercise our rights to be heard through our collective presence on the streets. And we're giving this award for showing that we Malaysians who care about our future must make a stand without fear of those who seek to silence us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bersih Steering Committee, and we have Dr. Farouk to represent them. Have a well and a We actually have 14 dog tags that are not just for Dr. Farouk. <laughs> so um, here we have our, our winners and I think uh, let's interact a little bit with them. Um, let me start with the questions and after that I invite uh, you to, if you have any questions, to, to join us in this um, uh, ceremony. Um, Auntie, you know when, when I saw you during Mercy, I'm like, oh, wow, you put shame on my face because actually, you know, um, you are my hero. So um, my question would be like, what makes you? What makes you do what you did during the Versailles, um, the two Versailles part of the rally? And uh, one more question is: Do you have any heroes? Who do you look up to? Because you, we look up to you, but who are your heroes? <laughs> okay, I look up to lawyers, Kapal Singh, Mandela, people who fight for right. What was the first question? <laughs> what makes you do what you did? Um, oh, you have freedom is, uh, is very precious to me. Freedom to just do anything that I like. Freedom to live. Freedom to walk. Just walk. Freedom to speak. Um, I don't know what else. In the the press brought up many things that I was unaware of. With not reading newspapers and not having TV. And I'm glad I'm meeting great people now after the PC. Yes. One after another. Um, could 
that, that, you know, we have uh, Madam Zuna. <laughs> I think my question to be, what is it like to have a partner in life who is so controversial in the Malaysian scenes, in Malaysian media? Are you, what's it like being the partner and do you, who, maybe who do you look to for heroes? Of course, um, without a doubt, it's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> or else, I I'll be reported to him. <laughs> but having a partner like him, um, actually, uh, when I first got married to him, it was very difficult because it was another life, another spectrum of life, if you want to you need to look at it. But over a period of time, as you get to understand his fights and the support, the immense support that he's getting, um, of course, naturally, you feel proud of him, and there's no, uh, no, no two ways about it. That uh, I gave him 100 and 200 percent support. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm behind him all the way. You, you can uh, tank up my husband, but I'm here to challenge you. Wow! Yes. <laughs> so much about Alicia in the news. Um, I don't know her personally. I think a lot of us only know her after she had gone through the process in the court. Um, it, it's a very uh, sad event for all of us. But um, Nisha, could, if you could share a little bit about Alicia with us. Um, and, yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So basically, let's talk about Alicia Farhana. For her, for the transgender community, she's like an idol to us. It's because of her fight, actually. So, um, Alicia Farhana is actually a friend of mine in Facebook. We haven't met in person and she's a part of my Netra, which is a, a secret group in Facebook itself. It's not secret anymore. It's not secret anymore, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, it's called Malaysian Network Transgender. So uh, before her case was brought up, she was a joyful, she was a very intellectual person actually, and she was sharing a lot of information in regards of hormones, you know, you know all the sisters' things about being beautiful and so on. So, yeah, she was a very joyful person at that time. But, um, and I remember the last time that all of the transgender community was, was, was telling her, we wish you good luck for your case. And after that, we didn't get any feedback from her anymore. You know, um, as you guys know that she was fighting for her rights to get her gender identity as a, as a transgender person, because in Malaysia, there's only male and female. Too bad. But uh, again, the reason why she wants to go for that ID card is because that she just wants to live in this so-called social construct thing in Malaysia. You know, she just wants to be in society, but then again, the society rejected her just because she's different. She's like me here. So, so uh, you know, going through all that uh, harassment by the media and even by all those abusive words, you know, that, you know, dia um, patut mati, she, 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 she's a mutat, you know, all those, all those words. And again, after being rejected by this bias court, okay, just because uh, she, she didn't so-called proven, I mean, for me, for you to prove whether you're male or female is either to see whether it's, it's a panic or a vagina down there. But it's not that, it's how we feel inside. That's how we try to feel ourselves. It's nothing to do with whether you go for sections, whether you have a breast or whatever. It's not that. It's how we feel inside. And that makes us a woman. You know, it's not biological woman, but we are still women. So because of all those depression, because of all this hatred that she faces here, she passed away because of depression. Whatever the doctor said, she died of heart failure and so on, but I believe it's because of this depression. So for me, and for the transgender community itself, in throughout Malaysia, Alisha is one of our heroes. And her fight is, even though she passed away, but it's something that everyone heard. It's the voice that we want, want to be heard of. So Alisha Farina, she's always in my heart and in my community heart. Thank you.